Hey guys, welcome back. This week I am talking all about how to make your art space more of a sanctuary. I recently did an art haul video. I got a whole bunch of supplies and I'll link that up above and below, but I needed to clean up my space and refresh everything so that I could put everything away. And after cleaning up, I really wanted to put some magic back into the space. It's important for me not just to have a clean and organized space, but something that really inspires me and makes me want to sit down and create. I really need to be surrounded by the colors that I'm working with and the papers and the patterns and the textures and the subject matter so that when I sit down I can just pull those threads and weave them into a painting. Art making shouldn't be this hard thing that we struggle to do. It really should be a joy. It should be this beautiful exhale of everything that we love. And in order to do that though, we need to be able to do a big inhale. And that's why surrounding yourself with the things that you love is really important. So for me, the first thing I needed to do was really go through everything that I had out on my tables and my surfaces, things that were in my line of vision that I wasn't gonna be using anymore. Things that were going to distract me from the work that I wanna create now. And it doesn't mean I won't use those supplies again in the future. It just means that that's not something I'm using right now and I need to declutter the space so that I have some clarity. And after that, it was really just a process of going through everything and pulling out the stuff that I really want to be using and bringing into my work and making sure that it is visible as much as possible. I'm somebody who, if I stick too many things in drawers, I will forget about them, I won't use them, and having to go look for things really disrupts my flow. And if you paint more intuitively, like if you are somebody who doesn't really plan out your paintings, you just have maybe an idea of what you wanna create, really being able to stay in that flow is so important. And if you can arrange your stuff in such a way that you're not disrupted as much, it's gonna be better. What I'm gonna do now is take you with me to make a mood board in the studio. I was gonna take this down and just tape stuff all over the wall, but I think what I'm gonna do is use this because it's already got push pins in it and it's just gonna be easier to put stuff up on here. And then I can put stuff around it and just give it a more eclectic look. Part of my issue with this is when I just put stuff on here because it's on this framed thing, it just looks a little too just so for me and I like things to look at least a little messy. This is the cutest little piece of paper. It was from when I did an image transfer onto a piece of craft paper to use in a painting. It's got little crows on it and it's really too small to use for anything so I just leave it up here for inspiration. So I'm not gonna have any rhyme or reason to this. I'm just gonna pick some things out that I like and stick them up here. This isn't necessarily about picking all my favorite things. This is about picking just things that I like enough so that they're all up here and it kind of refreshes the way you think about stuff because if you're always thinking about your favorite stuff, you might miss out on fresh combinations of patterns or colors. So I'm just gonna dive in, rip up some papers in here, go through my stack of stuff over here and just start pinning stuff up and taping things around. So I actually took a little break. I had to go pick up one of my kids from school. I'm gonna do a little bit more. I don't wanna fill up the whole thing. And I think I wanna make some birds or something sketching to put up here to mix with this or maybe some mini landscape sketches, just so that there's like 
some context for all of this stuff. and stop here. This feels very summery, very gardeny. It's all the stuff I want to bring into my work right now. There's a lot of opposites in here and contrasting things. There's very harmonious things and there's little like vignettes within it so I could come over and just get inspired by this right here and grab colors or be reminded of a stencil and a pattern. And like I could take these pieces of paper and turn this into a painting. I could take this group of papers and turn that into a painting and the same, you know, up here, these colors would go beautifully together. So this exercise, because this is what it turned out to be is an exercise, this turned out to be more helpful than I thought because rather than just having all my papers in a basket, I can visually see what's happening. And for the vast majority of these, I know what stencils or materials I used and I can get those colors again. So I don't necessarily need these pieces of paper. I can do this again on a piece of paper or in a painting. And yeah, I really like this. And I just I really like the energy that it adds to the studio. I want to talk about small spaces. I started making art again about eight years ago. I had made it quite a bit as a high schooler, mostly drawing, um, not so much painting, but after I had my third child, and these things often coincide with that, I started painting again and wanting to have an art practice and have something for myself. And that had started with a table easel and all of my supplies fit right in the table easel. That was it. So I know what it's like to have an end of the table or just a tray that you can pull out or a cart that you can pull out and you're working on the dining room table. That is all I had for a very long time. And then I graduated to a table in a spare room and I've graduated to now a garage, at least for the time being. So if you're in a small space and your ability to leave things out is very limited, I hear you. And also there are some things that you can do. One workaround might be instead of having a mood board on your wall, you could have like a sketchbook that you keep and do your experiments in, and it's maybe a mood sketchbook. And so if you can't put everything on a wall, the things that you would put on a wall, you can compile into a book form, something that you can pull out and leave open on the table while you're creating. You could also put things onto your tray or your cart that inspire you, whether it's magazines or other art books. If you like to use Oracle decks, I love those. It's basically a whole deck of somebody's art. How perfect is that? You can keep that on your cart to maybe pull out a card as you start creating and just get into that mindset. Another thing you could do is to keep your supplies organized on a little tray. You could have everything set up in maybe little jars and containers and things so that when you pull out your tray to work, it's like pulling out a beautiful buffet of supplies to paint from. So I just wanted you to know that I've been in that situation. I know what it's like to have a small space and to feel limited by that, but there are definitely things you can do to bring that feeling of a sanctuary into those moments when you're creating, even if it's only at the end of a dining room table. I've surrounded myself with some of my supplies that I got from the last art haul, and I've got my mood board. It's right on the wall right there. And what I'm doing is I'm just looking at pieces of it for chunks that inspire me. And I'm just gonna pull in those colors and textures and patterns into making a background in my sketchbook. So this is about trying things, experimenting, and it's not going to look exactly like it does on my mood board. I'm not necessarily using those papers in this, 
or even necessarily the same exact supplies, but it's more using it as like a thread that I can pull. It's a jumping off point that I can just look up and say, oh, those colors, those patterns, let's play with those today. And it just gets rid of some of that decision fatigue when you sit down and you go, oh, what should I paint? I think I'm gonna go for some of these warm beachy colors. I'm thinking of just, I'm looking up there and I can see these sort of muted warm pinks and muted greens up against some more saturated like cad reds and oranges and things and then some little bit of pops of turquoise and I think that's what I'm just going to do here. This isn't really a tutorial. This is just me experimenting with my supplies and showing you how you can use what's around you as a jumping off point. happy with how this turned out. This is just a chance to play in my sketchbook and take something off my mood board and translate it into a landscape of some sort. This is going to be a great jumping off point too for a painting. It can be difficult to come up with things to create or to translate abstract things into paintings and landscapes. This is just a way to filter all of that and experiment by turning it into a landscape and a sketchbook. So I hope all of this gives you some ideas and ways that you can turn your art practice and your art space into a sanctuary. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.